Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Le Grand Boo. The big feast. With myself, Cole Smithy, and my co-host, Mike Lacey. As always, we are here to copiously consume international politics and culture through the prism of a single film and a different craft beer each and every single week, as we've done for over 80-some weeks. Oh, my gosh. You would be a very overly ready baby Oh. We'd be we'd be walking around in there. You get little. I think elephants take like eighteen. Don't elephants take like two years? Cookie man. You know, is that about right? I don't know. I uh. I don't know about the gestation period of animals. I've been getting a lot of videos from my girlfriend. Uh, we're going back and forth. Of uh, I brought up the owl washing himself last yes. week. That was yes. a good one. Yes. She sent me the elephant's painting, which I believe there is a lot of uh, abuse and uh, torture. Ooh. And I think I don't think an elephant is just happening to paint a picture of no. an elephant. No. Yeah. I then I sent her this. It's going around. It's really weird. I don't know if it's real, but it looks like a rat standing on two legs next to a shower drain with a little top hat covered in soap. Like oh, I saw that. I saw, I saw what, that. What is that thing? I saw one. It was a meme, and the caption was Trump getting ready for the State of the it's, Union. It's a, it's a groundhog. It's a woodchuck. It's not a woodchuck. I don't know what it is, Mike. I just saw the picture. <laughs> I didn't watch the video. <laughs> you don't click on weird clickbait bullshit like sometimes. I do it less. I, I I do it less uh, as I get older. Do you consume internet like poop? Like that, you know? Do you? Do I try you not to. And, you, and, you don't and fall down it, meme holes or anything like that. I try not to. I try not to. I, 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 you know what? I'll, I'll do it. I'll watch like a Doug Demuro thing on on YouTube. I'll watch Trevor Noah or I'll watch Stephen Colbert. Yeah. You know, I'll watch a clip or I'll watch a clip from Saturday Night Live from the recent. That's week. high art compared to the holes that I go down. I I discovered an account without getting out of bed this weekend, which was is called cheating death and it was just people oh, no. almost getting hit by cars oh see i've seen that one i know but that it's, it's a whole account it's like there's hundreds of them the number of people were walking on the sidewalk and two cars like collide right in front of them and crash next oh, to them yeah, in a yeah. shame yeah but it makes you realize how many times well that's it that's that a, doesn't happen that's and a that person trick does that they hit. teach you when you're uh, if you're a race car driver is to aim your car at the collision because by the time you arrive there will, there will be space there but nowhere else will there be space. Oh, yeah. Interesting. So you have chosen the beer to go with Lady Bird. I have. And I think it's a good choice. I don't know why I think it's a good choice, but I think it's a good choice. Um, this one's uh, Revolution number nine. Uh, number nine. Hey, I'm sorry. It's not number Revolution. Nine. It's I was, Magic Hat. I was just thinking of the Beatles it's song. Ma- Magic Hat I Brewing. Hate, I, hate the, I hate the Beatles songs when they get into that. But uh, Magic Hat Brewing, number nine. Um, it's, um, I don't have a great reason. I just, uh, I liked it. I want to give it a shot. And uh, I'm going to read a little of the, the copy here, on here. Re- read the copy. Number nine is a sort of, oh my God, Cole. It has your favorite word in the first sentence of the copy on it. It says, number nine is a sort of dry, crisp, refreshing ale whose mysterious and unusual palate will swirl across your tongue with subtle notes of fruit and floral hop bitterness. Uh, it's a not quite pale ale, which I think is uh, is interesting. Um, I think the not quite pale ale has to do with its uh, slightly lower uh, ABV, right? And it's, it's definitely fruity and... Um, and it'll get you buzzed. Yeah, which fruits? Maybe, yeah, kind of a grapefruit. It does grapefruit. have a it does have a fruity quality to it. I, I like would, it. It's um, it has an herbaceousness to do it. Do you like? I've probably brought uh, grapefruit um, ales onto here. You know what they call grapefruit in, in French? Pamplemousse. Yeah, I kind of I did know that. Pamplemousse. Pamplemousse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, is that a? I mean, it's funny sounding. I'll it's very that. funny sounding. Yeah, it's not funny as gerbil, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't care for any of these rodents, these <laughs> people who grow up with these hamsters and gerbils and all that. <coughs> you know, what's the other one? The guinea pig. I don't understand the guinea. Why, why is it a guinea pig? <laughs> How did you arrive at that, sir? I think they are just animals that won't run away too hard. And won't die too quick. Is yeah. how they make the cut. 
into being called a pet. You know? Yeah, yeah. But I, I do. My first pet was a goldfish named Alfred, after Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, cool! Not of the Batman. No. Yeah, was was he, I could have had that association. Was he a corpulent uh, well. little goldfish? No, uh, he was just your your basic little goldfish, which I think is a funny term yeah. term of art because I watched. I went and saw Lady Bird a second time. You went back twice for this review. And it, yeah, and what I realized that there was a really good reason that my BS detector went off the first time around. Mm-hmm. But because I, I really came around to, to thinking that, you know, who's basic is Laybird. Laybird. She's, yeah. she's so basic. You, um, so yeah, let's, uh, does this episode require a big preface? There was, um, I think, I think your, your, uh, your celebrity meter. Uh, hit an all time. It uh, exploded in the wrong direction. You um, but es- you had you had, a, you had a moment on Twitter exploded. for a while because of this. Um, and uh, what that's wh- what I hear. What are the details? I haven't read very much. You've probably read more of, about it than I have. I read something. There was some critic of no note in the in the Midwest who said that I wasn't that I should just listen to everybody else and do my job. I. <laughs> <laughs> like take everyone else into account and then do my job. Well, I had uh, you know I had to you know do what I think a lot of people involved in uh, creative projects with someone who gets blown up in uh, the Twitterverse has to do now is like look at it coolly, read what you said, read what people were saying, and make a judgment of if I thought you were being some out of line chaos oh yeah what did you think prick. what did you think um i mean when it happened i hadn't seen ladybird yet and i wondered if you were trying to um what people seem to be accusing you of specifically because you you were the yeah, first what were and they only accusing critic. Me of? well i mean the fact that you're the first and only critic who gave it what is the negative score on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, but right, that's that's rotten. that's the nature of groupthink. I mean, people can't agree on anything. People can't agree about whether cars are good or bad. Right. And people are coming at you saying that you were doing it for attention, that you were um, u- using the fact that that would be a big deal to try to elevate your status, like you were making a political statement. And I, I, you know, having seen it, reading your review, uh, knowing you, I fully believe. In my heart of hearts, that you hated that movie. Well, here, here's so. here, here, here's what here's here, here's what I've realized. You know, twenty twenty hindsight. Um, the you know the whole aggregate culture that creates this group think around you know something that has a perfect hundred percent, and everyone decides that they're going to rally around and they, they want to protect that. And what you realize as a critic is now every. Anybody who would, who would review the film is intimidated. They want to, you know, and I think I probably got caught up in it a little because my idea was to try and be more fair to the movie by giving it a B minus rather than a C plus, even though I didn't recommend the movie. I gave it a rotten score. But, but, but I mean, you know, yeah. I'm the critic, so it's up to me. I get to decide if there's a gray area between B minus and C plus. Parse this out, because, yeah, I, 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 I did see that there was a tension drawn that a lot of the movies you had given a B minus on. Yeah, tomatoes. I don't know if it was all of them, but it, like it seemed like it was. Evidently, a lot. that's a story. I don't know how much I was thinking about that at the time because so you gave it a B minus, but was, a rotten. And historically, you'd given B minus. Sure. Which, if nothing else, just proves proves my point, which is that context is everything. And I think it's, I think it's hilarious that people don't see the hypocrisy when they're trying to, you know, call me out. You know, they're taking my inventory for crying out loud. Okay, so you're going to come take my inventory. Maybe you want to read the film review rather than getting so hung up about the difference between one a B minus and a 100 percent and whether something has. I mean, here's what I want to say about the the 100 percent movies because I, I I I guess there are movies that have a 100 percent score. Although I don't think any movie should have a 100 percent score because yeah, The I, Godfather doesn't have 100 percent around tomatoes. Yeah, and I bet that guy's not getting death threats. Uh, or maybe he is actually. I don't know. <laughs> Sophia Coppola calls him middle of the night. Like, My dad's real mad. But anyway, I, you know, it just it doesn't concern me. This thing about the the tomato meter. I know that it exists, and I know that this movie was being pitched as the best reviewed film of all time because the guy from 
Forbes, I guess, wrote that right after my thing. Even he did. The timing was weird because it came out the day after I had, uh, I, I guess, I, I, you know, irresponsibly uh, Wait, which, de- destroyed the so hundred, which, the perfect hundred percent score on, on Forbes. Yeah. So he was saying that. Um, I don't know. I wish. I wish I could pull it up, but. I mean, here's my point. It's just that, you know, people can't agree on anything. And and so for something to have a 100% approval rating, it doesn't mean anything. And it, it's curious to me that people have this fetishistic thing that leads them into groupthink. And this is what scares me about groupthink in general is just that, you know, people become so intimately attached to this stuff and emotionally invested. And I just think, well... It's a movie, and everyone's going to have a different opinion of the movie. Also, and uh, it, it and all movies deserve to be criticized. And I would say, here's what here's what I really think is that you know no one can say everything that they know. And I certainly learned that myself by going and seeing this movie a second time. Because if I was going to review it today, I'd give it a D. I wish I could change my grade from a C plus to a D because what was I thinking to even think that this movie should have a B plus, I mean, B minus in the first place. I was, I was so wrong. So here's the other thing is, Hey, I made a mistake. I actually made a mistake. Maybe I made several mistakes, but I, obviously- I appreciate, I appreciate you saying is this. Yeah. To break that down. Cause in your, your, your score did change just like to, to, to continue a little bit more on the right. Well, you know, I had pe- I that. had people emailing me, you know, just talking about the context of you know you've written twenty seven hundred reviews. They made it sound like I had written twenty seven hundred B minus reviews. I don't know how many B minus reviews I've written. I don't think about it in those terms. Do I thought you- it, I thought it, here's what I was thinking. I was thinking that you know. It, it, it's a populist movie. I can see why it's a populist movie. I'm gonna, in a minute, I want to go into why it's actually a terrible movie and, and the anti-heroine is a bad animal. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I just, I, 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 was trying to, I was trying my best to express myself in an area with nuance. And I, you know, society does not like nuance. That's the thing. And groupthink certainly cannot have it and the way you know what gets me to i haven't read like i said i haven't read all the tweets frankly i let my wife do the dirty work and you know read whatever oh, that's nice. but because uh, i have other things to do i know what i you know i get the gist of it because i've gotten the emails from people that they you know they think that i have no integrity but, but here's but here's what it really is is like i said before you can't say everything that you know and so i was on my way to vacation there were fires in california i have family near the fires. I had other stuff that I was concerned about. I wanted to get this review posted before I left. Uh, and so when I graded it, I gave it, um, you know, I gave it the score that I thought at that time that it, it deserved and, and that didn't, I couldn't reconcile, recon, reconcile um, the B minus and the fresh or rotten. And so I gave it a rotten. But I, I want to be fair to the people who may have been upset for what aren't reasons of just trying to be upset about something? You uh-huh. know, what what is their what, what would their claim be? And it's something like uh, they they don't like the look of a middle aged white man. Most likely, uh, this is, I imagine this is part of it. A middle aged white man giving a bad review that tanks a perfect score on this female director's debut yeah. about a woman growing up and um, and in a vacuum. I can see getting on, on getting on the same page with that objection. Um, not seeing the movie, not reading your review, I can see how you're the villain in that. Having seen it, I I, I totally understand why. I I don't actually understand why so many people gave it a, f- a f- fresh. Yeah, I don't either. I I. If it had lower than 50%, I would be aghast. If it had lower than even 75, 80, I would be like, something's wrong. But 100% is, there is some sort of group think going on there. There is a sort of a herd mentality because it's a far from perfect movie. And what, what I've learned from this process is that the fresh and Ron has to do with, um, would you recommend it? 
Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah which and is which is a very which is which is weird because yeah, you, you know, because to who are you recommending? Well, yeah, and and it's also to you know, it, you know, we have these different ideas. I think that the aggregate stuff really tends toward this grading on a curve. Yeah, and that's not my job as the critic. I'm not a teacher. I'm a critic. Um, and so my job is to criticize and there's plenty of things to criticize in this movie. And there's actually a lot more than I even hinted at in my brief review. And I'm now in the process of writing a whole nother review of the film, but you know, I'm trapped in, you know, how does all this work? You know, you do, you review it, and now that review is under glass, and everyone says, oh, you know, you were trying to do this, and then you changed the grade, and now you're trying to do something else. Right. Well, all I'm trying to do, just to be clear, is to criticize the movie because I don't think it's a very good movie. And initially, I thought that it was better than mediocre. That's why I gave it the B-, minus because I think once you get below B-, minus, everything's just medi- it's mediocre, and then it's the nine levels of hell. Um, And everyone has a different idea about what the nine levels of hell are. But I can say, you know, hey, I'm the film critic. I get to do my job. So what if if every movie that I ever gave a B minus to, I gave a fresh to? There's gray area there. And I get to call the shots because I'm the one making that decision. And I'll take the responsibility for it. And the way that I took responsibility for it was I lowered it to a C plus. I lowered it to the next lowest... uh, grade that corresponded with this grading system that yeah you know is I, the grading stuff to me it's not it doesn't tell the story the review tells the story and i think that people gravitate to over you know anything that oversimplifies that's what they gravitate to and that's baloney you know the well, world I, the, the, the world's a lot in terms I, of film criticism a lot more complicated I, I, than I, that. I wonder now that you know You've you've gone back and you're gonna write another review. If if people would assume that you're coming at it from a defensive place of having to, to double down. Hey, you know? you know people can think whatever they want. I've been in doing this for 21 years. I've got close to 3,000 reviews that are online. There's a lot more reviews really before the online madness happened because I started writing reviews in '97. So I had a lot of stuff that was in print in places like the Tacoma Reporter. Uh, and so let's talk about the movie. Let's talk about the movie. I think it's the best way um, to do this. Um, I saw this a couple weeks ago. You saw, you've saw you seen it twice now, so you are uh, better versed than me. But um, Well, hey, Mike, what was, remember when you were riding in, your car, in the car with your mom and she was really mad at you because you're being a dumbass and you thought that the good thing to do because your mom was right would be to jump out of the speeding vehicle? Remember when you did that? I, you know, um, Gurig was talking about that in some like interview that I heard, and she's like, you know, I really did that. I mean, the car wasn't moving, but I did that, and uh, I wonder, I wonder if that's a lot of what this film is. And I don't mean this as any sort of criticism, but I'm just curious well, I, if it's like you know, amping up real teenage stories. Well, like that. that was that sends up a big red flag to me because. If my teenage daughter jumps out of the speeding car with my wife, clearly she's in need of a psychiatric assessment. Uh, she's going to have to do some therapy. She's probably going to need some medication because there's a big problem here. It's very, it's a very dramatic gesture. And maybe what you're getting at, right, is... This is the first thing that happens right. in the movie. And and, and there's... A, and you're supposed to side with this character because her mother is so out of control. Let me, say, let, me, let me say this, or let me ask you if this is what you're saying. There's totally a movie that begins like that, and the character is consistent and grows and changes from that point. The movie we see after this, it is still an extreme act in what is a mostly like grounded movie that is a bit unjustified. Does that make sense? It's like, it's like, it doesn't seem like that (coughs) holds the much character consistency that she would leap out of a moving car. Like, well, you know, and and, and that's, and that is indicative of a lot of the things in this movie. Maybe is that what you're getting at? Well, you know, I saw this movie angry goes West and there's a conceit in the movie about, you know, you were basic before I met you. And what I say is, Lady Bird is 
her goal is to is to get more basic. She's trying to be as generic as possible, and her and her her attraction to conformity, the way that it arrives, is by ha- uh, having this side thing with her dad where they're sending out applications without the mom knowing you know they're ganging up on the mom behind her back to send send out these applications for colleges because little lady bird who's so special she she doesn't want to go to the colleges anywhere nearby and and the scene that really cracked it for me this is the scene that where the whole weight of the movie just shifted is when she gets accepted to UC Davis, which is a great school. If you get accepted to UC Davis and you're a resident of California, you are rocking. But no, little entitled Lady Bird, because it's only a half hour away from the peas, she throws a big temper tantrum. She throws a fit in front of her stepbrother, and Miguel, who has, is an adopted child who is a Harvard graduate, and she tells him, is he really a Harvard graduate? Yeah, who's bagging, who's bagging. The mom talks about it in the opening scene. I don't when think she, he went to Harvard. Yeah, he went to Harvard. Pretty sure it's Harvard. I don't think so. But he's bagging groceries. Yeah, check, watch the movie again. It's very key little. Is there not Berkeley? No. Okay. I don't think so. Um, that is a bit of of nuance there. But she says, but she went but to she's, an exceptional but, and, school, and she says to him, you know. But come on, you know, you, the only reason you got in that school and he goes racist. And you know what? He's right. She is a fucking racist. And that was the scene that really told me what I needed to know about this character, because not only does she abandon her poor uh, would be gay boyfriend who by the way is the best thing that ever happens to her in the whole movie if she was smart she would have buddied up with that guy she, you know they, they could she, you know whatever it's not like they can't be friends just because she's gay she would have stayed in the play she has no integrity to herself you know she gets in this play hey what the hell else are you doing you know you have some talent she sings you know she auditions she makes friends with the guy and then she just lets that go she has no she's rudderless this is a character with no moral compass and when we really get it is when she steals her teacher's notebook and ditches it so that she can lie on the honor system to get a higher grade that gets her into the school that she finally gets into at the end NYU her whole story is based on a lie and if that had happened in 2000 and 18 and not 2002 there would have been video surveillance so she would have been expelled from that little nice catholic school she was going to and i can go on man i'm yeah, telling okay. you seeing well, this I'm movie gonna, i'm gonna seeing this movie a second time i saw it in a whole different light okay this girl okay. is bad news and what's the big deal about that i mean like are you saying that the film is presenting her as uh, an ideal role model is like is the movie unaware of this it seems what, what like is, it what I, is the i mean what is the perspective on her cuz you, you you touched on a lot of stuff and it seems to be that you're saying that it is making a mistake about what it's portraying but couldn't it be very aware that this sort of Juno like alt girl is actually oh my deeply God. flawed. I and wish full it was shit. Ellen Page. I really do. Um, and I wish it was Juno. It's such a better movie. I'm glad you brought that movie up because Ju- Juno's a much better I'm, movie. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm not the first one who has, but it's like there is something very strange and incongruous with what the movie seems to be where she changes her name back to Christine from Lady Bird, right? And so, I mean, I think this movie is not the film about how great it is to be a quirky girl. Uh, these character flaws, I mean, it's, it's your critique is about, is critiquing the character, but I want you to, because I actually also would give this movie far from 100. Uh, a thing that we've talked previously is that it's, it's you found it very dramatically flat. That's what's interesting to me. I want to connect the, your, the criticism of the character into how the movie is trying to, to make us understand her and uh, the way that it is okay, yeah, let, 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 yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's unpack that. So you're supposed to hate the mom, who, by the way, just cares about her daughter and is trying to take care of her and doing the right stuff. So and am, maybe am she, I though? Am I though? It's like I mean, may, maybe, but it, what, it is. That's why she's paying attention to her. 
period. The fact that her mother is paying any attention to her, that is that. Am is... I supposed to hate the mother though? Yeah, I mean, I, like I, I think, I mean, perhaps I am, but it's so well acted. Anybody who could make a kid jump out of their car at a high speed is to is not. There's something wrong, man. Uh, don't, don't be anyway, but, Nicole, don't be don't be obtuse like that is there's like I'm not being correct. obtuse I think that we, I think the we, plot point it, it is, is very significant it is not it is it's not like this woman is is like abusing her secretly you know well any, it's, it's any, an extreme any, version any, of okay of let me let me, let, well, let me spell it out you know when the when the daughter says give me a number you know and she picks up the yellow memo pad and she wants her mom to give her a monetary amount that it has cost her to raise her so that she can go when she goes out in the world and she makes the money to pay her mom back she can pay her back and never have to speak to her again and i have to say i mean that's a little cheerleading you know that's the teenage angst talking yeah and i and that's I've, like, I've, I've that's like i've like i've seen that's that the moment i've seen that trope before yeah I've, that's yeah, the okay. moment of speaking truth to power when you go you know the little kitty cat puts up the paw and says hells to the yeah but i think she looks i think the movie is framing her to look like an asshole in that moment and when we see her come back around to being like my hometown's not that shitty uh you know okay, well, my, here, my 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 home my, my my name that i gave myself is actually kind of dorky although i think lady Bird is like kind of a cool name you know it's like it, it's after it, it, it reminds you of uh, lady bird johnson lady bird johnson yeah so um, of course it, ha- it has it, a, it has a, a, a cultural icon yeah though. and it has so it has a cultural in- underpinning to it but this person is not that person this is she this one this person could not be farther than lady bird johnson this person Wait, is, is lady bird johnson cool what, what does that mean well, this person doesn't have any any ethics. She doesn't have any morals. She does anything. Yeah, I mean, you know, the but the y- fact that critiquing the character isn't getting to me understanding why it's a bad movie because we watch a kind of exclusively films about bad people, like people you don't want to emulate. Why is this? Uh, All right. Well, here's yeah. well here's the thing. It, the, the best that this movie can be is mediocre. There is, you know, even if you fully accept the whole betrayal of character and the fact that in that one moment when she says the racist thing to her stepbrother Miguel played by Jordan Rodriguez that she is a racist she pulls the racist card out and she is is 2002 it's right after the twin towers have fallen and this girl has no sense of place she just thinks that she is the most important thing on the planet i think i think i think the movie knows that because she's humbled at the end. I don't care if the movie knows it. She's not humbled. Well, then, she but, gets Nicole, what she wants. I, it, she gets she she gets to be groupthink. That's where she's headed. She's trying to buy her way into groupthink. So for her, you know, this sh- shedding, now she's away from her mom. Now she can really be herself. She doesn't have anything to kick against anymore. So she doesn't have to be this aggro person. Now she can just suck it up and go to the local Catholic church and be Christine and have little, you know, text messages with hearts to her mom. And that's, and, and everything is great. Forget about the fact that she sold out her gay friend. She couldn't handle carrying on a friendship with her real friend because she wanted to go play with the preppies and have sex with the asshole. Um, so she she betrays herself at every level. She is somebody who the pat the pattern that we witness here, Mike, is that she's going to go to school at NYU. Mm-hmm. She's going to last about six months, and then she's just going to stop going to the school. And maybe she'll be a street person, or maybe she'll get a job at you know whatever, doing whatever. Um, but she'll be back living with the mom and dad in Sacramento probably a year from now. And it'll all be for but, naught. But okay, but we we didn't get to my question. Is the arc of a character who has a kind of radical uh, countercultural belief, in, who then sells himself? She short. doesn't have any radical no, 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 countercultural beliefs. You, like she she's putting out this you know this, this iconoclastic like a 
personality, but it turns out that she actually just listens to Dave Matthews. She's full of it. She she is not uh, truly like uh, swimming against. Did she really listen to Dave Matthews? In yeah, the that's her favorite song. Is, is Dave Matthews? Yeah. Oh, see, there you go. No, but there listen. You go. Let, you just let me told me the cool, whole story. Cool, let me finish. A movie that reveals that person's shallowness and uh, their lack of authenticity in in being countercultural at all sounds like exactly the kind of movie we'd love You're like yeah you know what no she's that is not a- countercultural there's nothing counter i wish that i wish that that she had that character trait but, but it simply doesn't exist but why isn't this like it, here's the thing i i, I agree this movie's flawed but i i want to hear is it because the movie's perspective on it is either too vague or has a misunderstanding about what it's trying there's to say. a big misunderstanding it's a the, misunder- okay so, yeah so, there's so, huge... i need you to connect that dot for me because right now it just sounds like okay. you're like i don't like this girl you know and it's like yeah she's well, no, dislikable but, see, but, but this does is, the movie not but no understand one that? no see this is the big this is the big thing that no one credit Gerwig doesn't know natalie portman who said she's been waiting 20 years to see this movie doesn't know this movie is disinformation this is a bad movie for children to see because it sets a bad example and it does it in this very uh apologetic way you know we're on the wrong side of the tracks we don't really have any money and i and i love the the bad dialogue that you get when the dad says i'm just like keith richards i'm happy to be anywhere oh really because you know where keith richards is keith richards is on tour you don't have there is nothing that you have in common with Keith Richards. I mean, you know, it's just such a it's but, such a but, disjointed but, but line, of, line of dialogue. That's why it's a good line of dialogue because it's very sad and like and like uh, no, but like it depressing. because no, it's like, no, it's wrong headed and 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 ignorant. It's not it's not aware of the truth. The truth is that. So, but you're saying that Greta Gerwig and I, like I'm defending this movie. Just to like get to the place where it's like where uh, we can have yeah, a common you, ground of, of, of okay, what, what I what I what, what you, I don't like. What are you no, defending? Like, what are you defending? Like, I don't think that line of dialogue was written because the father character thinks he uh, plays it's a, in the Rolling Stones it's a, it's and, a, it's and a, smokes it's his a father's hor- ashes. It's a horrible, horrible line of dialogue. It, it's just an example of a really bad line of dialogue, and they're all through the thing. I don't know. We we had talked previously about it's uh, how it is dramatically flat which was something that you had said and i went into it not wanting to agree with you but really like couldn't help but seeing is that the scenes have this very odd it'd be hard to recreate this odd way of <laughs> happening in front of you i think it is well acted for the most part i think the, and the music the music is awful let me, but like let me i think it's well acted for the most part uh but there is some way about how it is shot and edited and to agree with you, the music, especially the interstitial music, makes this so episodic, and there is a lack of driving uh, uh, plot uh, developments. There's a lack of coherent thematic structure. Right. The problem is the motivation. What's the character's it's, objective? What's the character's super objective? The character's objective is to get laid, which she accomplishes. The character's super objective is to go to college as far away from her parents as as she possibly can, and she, in, and by hook or crook, she gets that goal as well. So this is where. So she abandons. Okay. She abandons two friends in order to get the first okay, goal, okay. and she abandons her everything about herself in order to get. This, okay, the and, last and goal. this is where I think your criticism of her character and the storytelling of the, of the movie will come together and and sound less like because I know I don't think this is what you mean. It'll sound less like just being like I don't like this girl. And more like this is a sh- like not very well developed. Okay, and story. well, let's not get my feelings into it because I don't. This isn't you know. It's this is not a you know uh, an emotional session with Cole Smithy. Objectively, this person exhibits behaviors that are irresponsible, immature, unacceptable, and illegal. Okay, Cole, but like we we, <laughs> we watched that movie where that little boy fucked his mom, and you didn't say this about him. You know, you weren't like it's a bad movie because he like spat on his maid and. All right, so we're talking. Yeah, right. But I did. Well, I said okay. But there's a lot more character development that happens there. And and well, you know what? And, and this was and that well, was your counter example. Well, 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 I'm glad it, you brought it up. Yeah, I'm glad you brought it up. This film? This it's is, called Murmur of the Heart. Yeah, this and, was, you and, brought this up in your review. Your your original right, review. right. Yeah. And, and here's the thing about that character is, uh, yes, it's a terrible thing that happens, 
And and that character's a lot more despicable. Okay, hold than on. Lady wait Bird. a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But it gets it, it. You know, taking into account what happens after that, he goes. How, how many girls does he have sex with after like the next morning? You know, it's it, that precipice. Once he crosses that precipice, this is the way the movie. This is the story of the movie. This is the the the, the narrative culmination. Is that. He is sexually liberated, and he goes and by having sex with his mother. That's right. This is what happens in the story. Yeah. And then he goes have sex with a with a a girl that's he, that's his age, I guess just one, and uh, and then he comes back. And the way the tableau happens is that now the family, this is a terribly dysfunctional, fucked up family, is all happy. And to me, what Louis Mal was doing with that that ending, having everybody with living with their lies and being and pretending to be happy is he's showing the doomed nature of that family because you know that that little tableau that you're looking at there it's never going to be like that everything is going to f- collapse after that mm-hmm. and but you know that um and this and and so it's all built into the storytelling and that is elegant storytelling because that is when you show the uh the audience the these results and you let the audience you let the the narrative resonate with the audience so the audience has to go back and think about that stuff and say okay wait a minute wait a minute what how who you know it really make it really makes you part of the story this movie it's so presentational and it starts with that first thing with her jumping out of the car and it's never addressed. She walks around with a cast for a while and then we get a quick cut of the doctor sawing it off. And then she's back at school just in her normal bitchy teenage mode of so, disapproval of, of, of all things adult. So let's unpack this. I, I found Murmur of the Heart really disturbing. I found Lady Bird easier to watch, but I think Murmur of the Heart is better crafted. Yeah. Uh, no question. If I had to watch another one again of these two films, I'd pick neither. Uh, <laughs> but there's nothing that the boy in Murmur of the Heart does that doesn't seem consistent in building towards the horrible climax of that film. And his actions, I find them disgusting, but I find them... I. I I feel that there's a hand guiding me towards making some sort of point, and there is an ambiguity that is very disturbing. Now, there's an amb- there's well, a- well, let's just say, I mean, now you know we're talking about Murmur of the Heart again, but yeah. I mean, it's a it, it's a hundred times more complicated film than this film is, and it's but you really get into the familial dynamics of this family and so you understand the to every you under you understand all the degrees of character that the filmmaker is showing you and you're also understanding all the all the uh dimensions of character that you uh through your own life experience see the see the movie through so to me there's a much more vital interaction with the narrative through the characters through this historic period and through this uh, bourgeoisie family who is the opposite really of Lady Bird's family. Um, and yet the dysfunctional elements of both families, you know, I mean, you could argue about, we, you know, we've, we've talked about this off, off mic too, is that um, maybe a, a view into why Lady Bird felt like such like a play acting in front of me is that um, and it, you're not engaged with it is that there is a lack of being involved with, anything overly political and like we, we, we i remember we talked about how this is 2002 this is after yeah the, the world trade, trade attack the world trade attack this is or it might be 2003 because they're talking about the invasion of iraq i believe um and there what are the political beliefs of this family why is Lady Bird not a like young dumb democrat like i was well she puts up a fight you know but but it's it's, it's very specifically apolitical and no well okay as as soon as the parents are like i want to correct you a little bit about that because there's a few things that happen she says to one of her friends during uh when they're in a store and she says oh don't you know don't be a republican and then when she goes to lucas hedge's house and she sees the reagan 
poster in the bathroom and she mm-hmm. says really and he goes really would i, I would i it. recommend uh uh ladybird to my mom would probably like it um who, who wouldn't like it you wouldn't like it uh my girlfriend didn't like it my roommate didn't like it. oh your girlfriend didn't like it she didn't hate it it is kind of it's about where i landed i think i i think i liked it a little less um but we certainly like barely talked about it. My roommate and I and my girlfriend, we've all talked about Itania uh-huh. endlessly. Yeah. And fairly or not in comparison to this, and that's kind of a cultural conversation that's going on, you know, two working class characters that yeah. are trying to define themselves against yeah. other people's judgments. And one of them's working and very they, hard and, and one and of them's not. Both of them engage in unethical activity. Tanya Harding, all the worse. And I I, lo- Tanya, I love her way more for it. And everything she does comes from she, a wait core a minute, of... But wait a minute, wait a minute. She didn't do it. It was She didn't know that stuff was going on. Uh, she knew after the fact. I mean, like... Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just she saying. Didn't she, she, gets, she didn't do she it. She didn't do it. She gets tied up in... You, you were critiquing... Lady Bird as a character for doing all these things. Yeah. Tanya Harding didn't do that stuff. But it's not a character's moral decisions that make us think it's a good or bad movie or not. It's sort of how the movie presents that, the frame of it, what is it it is telling us about human nature. And I I've talked about Lady Bird so fucking much now, and I am not really sure it knows what it wants me to think besides just well it wants you to really like this person it's a i don't know if i agree with that i think i think it wants me to be like that's me and that's my mom and my i think my my mom does see that a little bit i think my sister see a little bit and like and we are uh we are men and i don't think we're gonna identify with that and that's the caveat to all of this is if you see you and your mom in this movie and it and it and it's amazing to see yourself on screen that's fucking cool that is real and that's important okay so here's what i say this is the genre that we're dealing with this is the familial genre you're supposed to you know feel a connection that there's somehow a mirror of this character and her relationship with her mother and your relationship with your mother well you know what i hear a lot i've i've heard this like four or five times with people saying Oh, when they're 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 fighting so much while they're buying clothes, and then and then she picks out a dress, and then immediately they're like, "Oh, I love it!" Like I relate so much to that. And, but here's the thing: it's in the trailer, and you get all of those scenes in the trailer, and maybe it's just like a great trailer, and you might just <laughs> want to watch the trailer. Because Lady don't, Bird, you get a m- pretty good trailer. You get I don't know it's. You, in in the way that it jumps and you sort of have to intuit like what the 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 connecting tissue is from watching the trailer you feel the same watching the movie it just feels like an expanded trailer which is not a great movie well i think there's a deceptive side to the movie because i think that it's selling you a character in the guise that this is a good person, this is somebody you could emulate, this is somebody you can empathize with. I don't with. think she would change her name if she's supposed to be uh, a character that we are supposed to completely think is great. And, I dated emulate. a girl who changed her name. I don't no, know. No, no. I don't change know her name the... in the end of the movie to Christine. It's like, it's oh, the yeah. character is like well, bowing her... down to the idea that mm-hmm. she's been wrong to try to create a new identity and then actually her parents are great and Sacramento is great. That's an interesting thing to have a rebellious character go n- normal like that. But what is it really saying? What like in? It's saying in, that she is saying. Am I, am I just? It's saying that she has achieved her goal and she is now a conformist. That's and she can enter her her fun life of conformity. But is it saying something with like going from there and saying and conformity is good? You know, and then you were like, "Well, I fucking disagree." Maybe there's a lesson there. About oh, I, it. I don't know. I, 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 I who's, con- who's conformity never worked for me. Right. <laughs> but if conformity, and so here's I'm going to come out swinging for this theme. If conformity is not being an asshole and is realizing that social conventions, being polite and reasonable, not getting fucking like hammered with a stranger you know at the end of it these are actually things that conforming to certain things help you 
become a successful actress and potentially and he, director. Yeah, yeah, you know what it gets you? Conformity? It gets you the group. Uh, it gets an, you an the Academy Award it gets nom, you, maybe. No, well, it gets you the group think of 100% score on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, there you go. Yeah. I, I, I think it is saying something that's like, this, In, this, this douche. Anytime you see a 100% anything, just know that you have arrived at the lowest common denominator somehow. Mm-hmm. You have arrived there, and that is where you are. <laughs> yeah. And you can enjoy it. Maybe have a bubble bath. I mean, it, 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 may be, it may be the film lands in a place where it is having us see, hey, you know what's not that cool anymore? Being one of these, like, like big mouth douchey characters, right? Because she changes. No, I, don't know. I don't know if it deserves She's hip that. to be square. She's, f- she's, she's, uh, what's the guy who, who had, uh, Huey Lewis. Huey Lewis. Yeah. She's Huey, yeah. Huey Lewis in American Psycho, <laughs> which came a out, reference, which came out two years before this. Yeah. Was set anyway. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know what to say. My, my real opinion, I'll speak experientially all this theory, just explaining it. I was not a, engaged and wanted to be and i was disconnected so i i've spent this time trying to figure out why that was well i would i I, I wish i had given this movie a d i'm gonna give it a d in the text of my review but i'm not gonna put a grade at the bottom of the review um and you know you can whatever make of that as you will but i think i think that the thing about film reviews is there's a lot more nuance to reading the text of a film review than there is to jumping at the bottom and seeing what letter grade or number of stars or aggregate score I've anything never, has. I've never given a movie a, a, a letter score, but I think ironically, I, <laughs> I think I really would give this a B minus. You know, it's you wrecked. It, it, it has it has wrecked B minus for me. It yeah. was a mistake that I that I gave it a B minus. I wish I had given it the D that it deserved just out of the gate. People, I, I wonder how people would have come come at me if I had just given it a D and just gone really after the movie. I mean, I'll be honest. Like, uh, being the devil's <clears throat> advocate to you on this has made me appreciate some potential elements of it more. Maybe on another rewatch, I would I would find that um, not there, but. Um, I think it's performed very well. I think that they did a lot with not a lot. Um, I think Lucas script. Hedges is really good. I think you know you, <laughs> you know who I don't like in anything yet really is like, the Timothy Chalamet is not doing it for me. And call me by your name. I I he was just uh, I just hated the way he ate citrus and what he did with it. Oh, and that doesn't uh, sound good. Uh, yeah, have you seen it yet? No, I, I plan to see it. It's going to open in the neighborhood. I guess I'll 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 do my uh, three block commute. Um, I do love Michael Sturberg. He's the father in it. He's um he was the lead in in, in oh in Call in Me Stur- by Your Name. Sturberg. Yeah, he's the lead in um a serious man, mm-hmm. the Coen Brothers yeah. film, and yeah. a big character on um, Boardwalk Empire. So, shout out to him. Um. And I recently watched in the end of the fucking world, which I think oh, is I watched all great. That as well. And I, I understand there's the, they're going into production of season two. Very excited about that. Bates motel has its fifth and final season. I didn't com- love, I, up. I didn't totally love end of the fucking world. You know, I, I kind of wished I am not going to spoiler on this, but when someone realizes that they're not who they thought they were, I was like, okay. I think I, think I wanted to see that show where it, it continued on that plot. Because from that point, I could kind of see where it went. And Well, you know, there's going to be another season. I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. There we are. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Please visit colesmithy.com where you can get to my Patreon account if you'd like to pledge us your monthly support. We would love that. You can also just email us, reach out to us, and tell us uh, about any specific movies that you might like for us to talk about. And remember to turn your cell phones off when you're walking, driving, riding a bicycle, or watching a movie. <laughs>